Good morning, family guy. Good morning. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your bro, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. So winners with a Z, the O-R-G, which is the Sellout Radio Network. We're streaming live there. Also, at live, that's so winners with a Z, the O-R-G, streaming these morning devotionals and everything that we have going on over there at that website as well. The live chat is open. Amen. Questions, concerns, prayer requests, all that is in full effect. Amen. Don't hesitate to leave your questions, your comments, prayer requests, or anything that you have, your concerns about what's going on on these morning devos. You're invited to share your heart, to share your ideas. Amen. Um, But what we don't do here, we don't debate. Amen. There's other platforms for that, and um, I'm pretty sure I can direct you to the right people um, for the debating part and all that stuff. But today... Oh, well, this is day number but three of our Holy Week. Amen. We celebrate um, the, the seven days, the week, um, as Jesus takes his journey towards the cross, historically. Amen. And we just focus on his life, death, and resurrection. And what he did that week, and that Holy Week, we call it. And I'm calling this one from death to life. From death to life. Amen. And um, man, that's what happened to me. I went from being lost in the sauce, dead in my sins, to alive in Christ, right? And dead to sin. Before I was dead in sin, now I'm dead to sin. I went from death to life because of the power of the resurrected Lord Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Mashiach Magid, right? The Ruach HaKadosh, amen? Oh, man. When you commit yourself to the Lord, you will be transformed and alive in him. You will experience the resurrected life. We're going to be in Philippians chapter number three, verses 10 to 11. Philippians chapter number three, verses 10 to 11. I'm excited. Amen. Because this is the week where we could really uh, witness to people and they could see the life changed the life that they saw before Christ and the life they're seeing now in Christ and the life that they will expect to see in their own lives, all they have to do is actually admit that they need God, admit that they're sinners, admit that they need forgiveness for their sin, go to Jesus, ask Jesus to forgive them, amen, and then the Bible says you will be saved and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit God will live and dwell inside of you and lead you into all truth. I know it sounds... Fantastic! It sounds amazing. It sounds too good to be true. It sounds easy for that to happen in your life. But guess what? That's the gospel message. Amen. Jesus came to not condemn the world, but to save the world and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He was the one, the only one, the spotless lamb of God, right? The only one who could pay off the sin debt. No human could do it. No prophet, no apostle, evangelist, teacher, pastor, nobody could do that. Apostle, nobody could do that except the Lord himself. So he sent himself in the form of a man named Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. He was born from a virgin. Amen. He lived 33 and a half years without sin. And he went to a cross willingly. Amen. Died on the cross. Three days later, rose again. And we have a resurrected life because he rose from the dead. And then when we receive him, we rise from the dead as well. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. Now we're dead to sin. And now we're alive in him. We're calling this one from death to life on the morning Devo. So thank you for coming through. Listen, I already got some people here. Amen. Oh, is that Booby Watts? Um, Good morning, Brother Sam. It's me, Sean Burton. I'm using my actual account now. Hope you're doing well. Oh, what's going on, Sean? God bless you. How have you been? I've been busy. But I've been alive. I've been good. Amen. In Christ. And I've just been fighting a good fight of faith, man. Hopefully you've been doing the same. Orlando Garcia, God bless you, my bro. God bless. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. So let's get it on. Let's go for it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, if we're going to pray. And after we pray, we're going to share this out for like 60 seconds. Help me share this out to as many people as possible. Amen. So that way we could get this to as many um, listeners and to as many viewers as possible. Amen. Because I'm already, I've been on the shadow man for a long time. Amen. And I, um, you know, I refuse to force the issue. 
hey man, let's pay for this and to pay for that and a boost post and all. I refuse to do that because I believe that the word of God will reach, regardless, will reach the people that he wants to reach. Amen. And sometimes all we have to do is show up and be available to the word and hear his word and your faith will increase. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing what? Hearing the word of God. So let's go for it. Let's pray and let's let's really um, remind ourselves of who we are in the Lord. If you're not born again, if you're not saved, if you're thinking about it, if you're thinking about, you know, all this um, thing about the resurrection and the Lord Jesus, you're in the right place. The word of God will cause us all to think, amen, and think this through. So, Father, I thank you that whatever we're going through, whatever time we're facing, whatever whatever thing that's an obstacle that's in our way between our relationship with you, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you would just break that wall down. And, Lord God, that you would help us make a decision for you today and every day, and that we will focus on the finished work of the Lord Jesus And we would know that you are the author and perfecter and finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord God, for increasing us in every area of our life. Thank you, Lord God, for financial blessing. Thank you, Lord God, for health, strength, and protection. Thank you, Lord God, for everything you have done and everything you continue to do. I give you glory, worship, honor, and praise as we think through this holy week. And we remind ourselves what you did for us, Lord God. And your word proves it. Your life proves it. Your death and your resurrection proves it. And I thank you, Lord God for your coming back, that you promised that you would come back soon uh, for your bride, for your church. So I speak life over every single person listening and watching now. I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to magnify yourself. Lord God, that you would teach us and be our Holy Spirit teacher, and that you would guide us and guard us and lead us into all truth. Pray I had your protection over myself, my family, my whole household, my whole bloodline from the very youngest family member to the very oldest and everyone in between. I pray health. I pray financial breakthrough. I pray peace be still. I pray against any demonic oppression. I come against any generational curses in Jesus' name. And I pray the same over all my friends on the other side of the screen, the other side of this mic as well that are listening and watching. And I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to show who you are through your word, through your love, through your grace, through your mercy, through your forgiveness, and through your resurrection. In Jesus' name, we pray this by faith. And all those who agree, we say amen and amen, amen. I'm willing um There have been tough times on my faith. I want to be true to God. So I think it's best for me um, to make listening to people like you and going to church. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's honesty. And God deals with honesty all the time, all the time. And because God is good. So amen. So let's go for it. Help me share this out. When we come back on the other side of those 60 seconds, we'll get right into the scriptures. Um, What did I say? It was Philippians chapter number three. Philippians three verses 10 and 11. That'll be our starting point and our key scriptures. I'll be right back. Amen, amen. We're back. Let's go for it. Let's see what the Word of God has for us today as we move forward in this holy week. Amen. And wow, I could tell you and share so many stories and testimonies of people that I've met recently that God is doing an amazing work in their hearts and minds and revolutionizing their way of life. And you could see that the resurrected life that they're living, amen, is contagious and other people are wanting what they have. Amen. And if you have this resurrected life because you have the Holy Spirit God who 
The same spirit who rose Jesus from the grave, amen, is the same spirit that lives in us. The same resurrection power, amen, is developed in us by way of Holy Spirit. We are from death to life. I'm telling you, man, I can't make this up. That's the thing. I know he did it. I just don't know how he did it. He took me from where I was, and he's taking me to where he is, amen. And I'm sticking to it because I know me. I know my testimony, amen. I know where I was headed, and it wasn't in a good direction. It wasn't in a good place, and thank God for his grace over my life that he took me from death to life. Death to life. Amen. On the morning Devo. And let's get to the scripture. We're going to be in Philippians chapter number 3, verses 10 to 11. And this, so that I may know him experientially, to experience becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him. Amen. Because this is a relationship. Always remember that. It's not a religion that you have to do A, B, C, D, and you have to do it this way during this time and facing this way in this direction, and you have to do all these works and deeds and this kind of... No, it's becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him, a personal relationship with the living God that takes you from death to life, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely, and in that same way, experience the power of of his resurrection experiencing that and you know what i mean if you're born again you're like man i was blind but now i can see i was dead but now i'm alive in that same way experience the power of his resurrection which overflows and is active in believers and that i may share the fellowship of his sufferings and that's the place where people um, run for the hills No one wants to suffer the way the Lord suffered. No one wants to share in the suffering. We want the blessing, but we don't want the the suffering part. Amen? And which overflows and is active in believers, and that I may share the fellowship of his sufferings by being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness, even to his death, dying as he did, so that I may attain to the resurrection that will raise me from the dead. So listen, the problems are worth it. The process is worth it. The troubles are worth it. When people mock us, and the Bible is clear when it says, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. People are mocking God thinking that, oh, they're making fun of a living, holy, righteous, loving, all-powerful, all-knowing God. And God is like, okay, you're deceived. <laughs> you can't mock God. You can't push God around. You can't make fun of You could do whatever you want in your own mind. But do not be deceived. God is not mocked. So there's a bunch of deceived people mocking our faith, mocking our God, you know, especially during Holy Week. You know, they're taking shots at Christianity, which is okay. You want to take shots at Christianity, you could do that because I think in American Christianity is is not it anyway. So you could go ahead and mock Christianity, but don't be deceived and think you can mock God as if, you know, you're doing something and you're doing something important. Amen. All you're doing is being deceived. And when a man reaps, he will sow. When a man sows, he will reap. It's clear and plain in the scriptures. But in this holy week, we celebrate God's great victory over sin. Jesus came and killed sin. You might think, oh, they killed Jesus. Jesus literally, right, laid down his life for us. No one took his life. He laid down willingly his life for us. God cannot be killed. Amen. God cannot be murdered. But in this season, we celebrate God's great victory over sin and death in the resurrection of Jesus. So while we do that, we enter into a glorious, right? Amazing, glorious encounter with the power of God. The power of God. You know, people fall out under the power of God. Amen. I'm not talking about people come and push you down. In your head. I'm talking about when you feel the power of God, you go to your knees, maybe to your face, prostrate, because it's the power of God. And it's a power that's so loving, a power that's so, um, man, indwelling, a power that you know that God is with you. It's a reminder of who Jesus is in your life and in my life. Or when you get slain in the spirit, right? In doing so, we enter into a glorious encounter with the power of God. That has victory over our weaknesses and our inabilities 
And we no longer have to say yes to sin. We could actually say no to sin because we have the power of the resurrected Christ living inside of us. Amen. And by doing that, we know that we are able to say no to all things that we used to have to say yes to when we were slaves and in bondage to sin. There's a lot of TV shows and movies mocking God. And not only that, praising Satan, thinking that he's the greatest. Such a shame. Well, listen. The world does what the world does because the world is being influenced and being ruled by the ruler of the world system, which is the devil. So it makes sense that they're doing that. I know uh, we just have to pray for those people to come out of that darkness, just like I came out of darkness because God, amen. But it wasn't because of anything like I wasn't in a church service. My testimony is not like that. But I personally called on to God because I knew I was in a dark place. I knew I was lost. I didn't know how to get out of it. So I said, if you are real, God, change me. That was my plea to God. And he did it. Amen. He didn't have to. It was all by grace and mercy that he did it. But yeah, they are. Um, they are, Sean. They are really mocking and they're playing games with the living God. Amen. They're playing games. And what happens when they continue to play games, they feel comfortable. Why? Because they are also under the grace of God. <laughs> and they think, oh, look, nothing's happening. We can keep on doing this. Amen? As if they don't think, well, they don't think that their time is coming. And unless they repent, they're going to get what they deserve for the mockery. Amen? So I pray that they will repent, that the, all the executives and the TV programs and the cable programs and the networks and all that, these owners and these people will repent and turn from their wickedness to the righteousness of God. Amen. Other than that, they're going to be, oh man, they're going to be in a bad place for all eternity. And just because they followed the trend of, and the vibes of this world. And they thought, like, you see, nothing happened to us. Like, I literally see people on, on the internet saying, if God is real, why does he strike me dead right now? As if me or you could provoke God to wrath. When the Bible is clear, when it says God is slow to anger. So in his slowness to anger, people think that he's not doing anything. Yesterday we talked about silence, silence of God, because we don't see God moving and working on our behalf. We think he's not doing anything. That's because we're human. I can't see it unless God allows me to see in the spiritual realm. I can't see what he's doing physically, right? Spiritually, I can't see it. I'm limited to my sight. But the indwelling Holy Spirit reminds us of the promises of God, reminds us of what he can do, reminds us of what he did do, and reminds us of what he's going to do. Amen? Even though we don't see it, we don't have to see something to believe something when we're born again. Amen? When we're Christians, believers. Amen? Sister Nilsa, God bless you. Good morning to you as well. Welcome back to the Morning Devils. Good to see you, my sister and my friend. Amen? Amazing story to tell. I work in sports retail store during the holidays and... One day a man walks in and he said he wasn't really looking for anything. Continue in the next message. Amen. Okay. So listen. In the resurrection, we see in the scriptures the pure display of God's divine love. This is not a love of for religion. Jesus didn't die for us to be religious. Jesus died for us to be alive in him. Jesus didn't die for us to continue sinning. Jesus died for us so that way we could be dead to sin and alive in him. We are, have, we are experiencing the resurrected life. We don't have to, have to listen to this. We don't have to sin. People say, what do you mean? I mean what I say. We don't have to sin. If we have the resurrected life, resurrected Lord living inside of us, amen, and he doesn't um, dwell in sin. So, I can't call myself a sinner no more if Holy Spirit God is living inside of me. Yeah, I, do I deal with sin? Do I battle sin? Do I battle the flesh? Of course, and we all do. But I can't call myself what God doesn't call me. He no longer calls me a sinner. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God, a son of God. I'm in the royal priesthood. Amen. I'm above, not below. I am what God says I am, and you are also. Amen. So stop repeating what the enemy is trying to tell you in his loud voice and nauseous voice prideful voice, arrogant voice saying, you're nobody, you're not this and you're not that. Don't repeat that. Repeat what the Lord says over your life. Good morning, Sister Joanne. I see you. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. So to continue the story where Sean is saying, so him and I had pretty lengthy, long conversations. And so when he was about to, um, to leave, he ends up off with, keep 
reading that King James Bible, keep in mind that the type of Bible that I have. Amen. Amen. So you're being reminded of God's word. Amen. So that's good. So listen, when we focus fully on God's wonder, his power, his mercy, his grace. Amen. We start accomplishing things that we thought were impossible. Because remember, for us, this resurrected life cannot work without God working through us and showing us this resurrected life, showing us that we went from death to life. We're not dead in our trespasses and sins anymore as born again believers. We are alive in him. And guess what? Last time I checked in the scriptures, Jesus never sinned. Amen. So he showed us a perfect example, amen, of how to live this Christian life out. Okay? So we can't, we all fall short of his glory standards. So we can't reach the bar of godliness, of godhood, amen, as being God ourselves. But we could surely follow him, amen, into his glory. We actually carry the glory of God everywhere we go. That's why when you enter into a room, the atmosphere changes. I follow a gospel rapper named Adam, A-T-T-A-M. Amen. He has a song called Climate Change. So he says that when we enter a room, the climate changes. And I believe it by way of Holy Spirit. Amen. We can set the tone. Sean continues to go on and say, my Bible was in the back of the store. So he had no way to know I had a KJV, the King James Bible. Right. Um, the point is that God is real and he shows hints around and God was reminding me to continue to know him. Amen. Thought you would enjoy that story, Brother Sam. Yes, I did. Amen. And thank you for sharing that. Other people are going to take that story and remind themselves too that God's always watching. God knows. Amen. And although we might not be as much in the word as we used to be, or maybe um, I, uh, my spiritual daughter was sharing with me that she, she doesn't speak to God as much as she used to. And I always tell people, we'll start again. Amen. God is a faithful God. He's our father, a father in heaven. And he wants us not to be dead in sin and dead in doubt and all that stuff. He wants us to be alive in him. And he promised us life and not only life just scraping by day by day. You know what I mean? The hustle bustle. He promised us the life in abundance. And that's when we're in his word, when we're applying his word, when we're working through the word, when we understand the gospel, when he knows what, when we know what he did for us, we live this resurrected life, this life that is a born again experience that other people look at us and be like, why are they still happy? Why are they still full of joy when this, that, and the third has happened? Amen. Has happened to us. Amen. Amen. Right. So it's like, nah. Don't go for any of the lies anymore. Don't go for any lies no more. My friend, Sister Santiago, amen. God bless you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the sacrifice that you do to bring it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's so worth it. When that long, I woke up a uh, half hour before I was supposed to. And uh, I believe the Spirit of God woke me up. I heard something and I woke up. So I started praying. Amen. In the spirit. And I was like, well, as soon as I close my eyes, I know that alarm is going to go off again. So I, just, I was just paying attention. Amen. To what the Lord was telling me at 430 in the morning. Amen. So thank you so much, my sister, for coming through. Joanne, God bless. You say that that's like when you walk into the church, you could feel the spirit of the Lord when you walk in there. It feels so good. Yes, it does. Because listen. Holy Spirit God is the same Holy Spirit God I have, same Holy Spirit God you have. So imagine getting together with people that are filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. And that is a powerful environment, an environment that could cause a miracle, could cause change, transformation. People get saved, delivered. Everything goes on when the body of Christ comes together. Amen. And somebody who's close to that or who's experiencing that, with us, amen, will experience a breakthrough in their hearts and their minds. I see it all the time. Every week at church, someone's getting saved. Every week in church, somebody's getting delivered. Every week in church, somebody's getting encouraged. Every week in church, somebody's being convicted of their sins. Why is it us? No, it's the power of the resurrected Holy Spirit, the resurrected Lord Christ, the Spirit of God moving among the people and doing his thing and really showing stuff to people who have were blind. Amen. And he's opening their eyes. He's opening their ears to hear. Amen. He's activating 
and his promises in our lives. When we focus fully on the on the God who promised us the power to accomplish the impossible, we join hearts when, when the psalmist says, the Lord has done this. Amen. And it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. We see that in Psalms chapter 118 verses 23 and 24. So this is a great day to be happy and to be joyful and to know that during this holy week, well, we have a not only a saving God, but a Lord and Savior. Amen. And there's a time and place where there was a thief on the cross. There was two thieves and Jesus was in the middle. And there was two thieves, one to the left and one to the right. And one of the thieves was saying, you know, trying to curse God and saying, if you're, you know, mocking him and saying, in his pride and arrogance, saying, if you're the Messiah, why don't you save yourself and save us and get us off this cross? But then the other thief was saying, listen, don't you fear God? Don't you know this man is innocent? Don't you know that we deserve this punishment, but Jesus doesn't deserve this punishment? And then he um, asked Jesus, Jesus, will you remember me? And Jesus looked at him and said, surely, verily, verily, truly, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. That's the grace of God. Although the thief on the cross didn't experience Jesus as Lord, he experienced Jesus as Savior. And when he died and his opened his eyes, the next thing he saw was eternal life in Christ. Amen. But I think he was shortchanged. Although the grace of God, the mercy of God, the power of God, the resurrection of God, amen, um, saved his life, but he didn't know Jesus as Lord. So now he has all eternity to meet Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. And that man, that thief is going to be walking around heaven, sharing his testimony and be like, man, uh, for the very last minute, the very last breath, amen, right before I died, the Lord came and saved me, amen, and gave me this resurrected life, this new life, amen. So listen, I don't know if you're a thief, I don't know if you're into um, pornography, I don't know if you're into adultery, I don't know if you're into drugs and addiction, I don't know if you're living with your girlfriend um, um, or your boyfriend outside of wedlock, I don't know if you hate the church or not, or whatever the situation may be. You can never be too far from God's grace. You can never get too far from God's forgiveness and his mercy. Amen. So I suggest you stop what you're doing. Take a moment and go back to the Lord and say, listen, I need you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Amen. And this this place that you are that's so dark that you might be like, man, I'm so far. I might as well keep on going in this direction. There's no way out. There's no way back. That's a lie from the enemy. Amen. Call out to God. I did it in the year 2001, and I was in a real dark place. And he came to where I was to take me to where he is. He took me from death to life, and he could do the same for every single person that calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So I'm out of time. I hope and pray that this Holy Week is doing you well, and you're focusing on the resurrected life. Amen. And you can know this death to life situation in your life. Personally, you can know that. So we were in Philippians chapter number 3. Um, I suggest you read the whole chapter for yourself. We were camping out in verses 10 and 11 from death to life. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always, God is good. Peace.